Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. And if you like these watches, you can see them on our website, thewatchbox.com. We are starting to see the first pre-owned examples of the 2018 Omega Seamaster Professional Diver 300 meter collection. And they are rich, they are deluxe, they are handsome. They are so special that I wonder why we still need the Planet Oceans. This feels like a flagship dive watch. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see that the 300 has gotten a little bit bigger. It's about 42.2 millimeters compared to the old 41, but proportionally, everything remains fairly constant. It's a thicker watch than it was originally. Uh, the combination of the coaxial escapement and then the later tri-level coaxial escapement has caused the watch to swell to 13.8, but again, we're talking multiple millimeters thinner than just about any Planet Ocean. This remains a competitor for any surf turf dress watch like a sub that you may choose to wear under a dress cuff. This one will easily clear. Lug to lug, it's 50 millimeters on the nose, which means I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference with absolute security and comfort. The strap is a beautiful piece and also new for this model year. As you can see, integrated with conforming end profile, so it's a very holistic design. It, one piece runs into the other rather than appearing separate, but the nice thing about the strap is that it pretty much exits straight down out of the lugs rather than flaring out and fighting. Omega realized that because this is generally the choice of those with smaller wrists over the planet ocean, the strap should be designed with that in mind. Very comfortable. You can see on the underside plenty of channeling and an air pocket system with a wave motif nicely echoing both the movement finish and the dial, but it allows heat and moisture to escape the wrist on a hot day. It also reduces the amount of material on the underside of the strap to make it more pliant and more supple. You'll note that there is a handsome double striation down the top, that with a sort of brushed finish and then a matte finish about the striation. So a double finished, or I should say double molded strap, very impressive. And it terminates in a newly designed pin buckle, which was designed expressly for this application, a combination of polished bevels and satin facets. It's a recapitulation in miniature of the case's design. And you can see that to good effect. The case featuring satin flanks and polished bevels as it always has, but there has been some change to the case profile. The profile about the crown guards is a little bit more elegant, graceful, pared down. You'll note that the lug ends themselves are slightly flatted at their ends, so they come to more of a point at their foot. And if you look at the bevels from the top, let's give ourselves a bit more light, there's a little bit of a double dihedral. It, it twists inward and then the rate of twist increases. You can see it better off angle or off axis, but something definitely changed there. You'll also note there's now a sort of Reese's Pieces, or not Reese's Pieces, but Reese's Peanut Butter Cup profile to the conical and fluted helium escape valve. The knurling makes it easier to grip. Now it doesn't have quite the same awkward canister profile on the case flank. It's a little bit more tapered, a bit more elegant. You will note that the bezel remains largely unchanged, albeit now with a yellow gold two-tone option. The yellow gold is gorgeous, and having seen the red gold and the yellow gold side by side, and I may as well do you the favor of demonstrating, I, I actually like the yellow gold better. Used sparingly, yellow gold is punchier and more dramatic, and it fits this watch. It's sort of a loving retro nod to the fact that the original Seamaster Professional Diver 300 came out in 1993, and this kind of treatment was all the rage back then. The ceramic inlay in the bezel remains, as ever, highly scratch resistant. The bezel, as ever, has a relatively difficult profile to grip if your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved, but the ratcheting action requires less effort now, so it's a bit easier to manipulate. Line it up with the skeleton minute hand, uh, an icon in its own right. Now you've got an impromptu zero to 60 minute timer. I prefer a dive bezel to a chronograph nine times out of 10. Also, remember that the ceramic of the bezel is now paired with ceramic of the dial. The dial, as you'll note, there's a small zirconium dioxide stamp just below the cannon pinion in the hands returns the famed Omega wave that reigned from 1993 to 2011. It was phased out from 2012 to 2017, but it returns for this 25th anniversary Diver 300 meter edition. And the nice thing about enamel and ceramic is that they have the same quality of being glossy, rich, lustrous, and resisting corrosion. Ceramic is even better than enamel in the long term because it's less fragile when being serviced and even more chemically resilient. 
also handsome, the applique, all yellow gold, yellow gold hand center, plenty of luminescent. You will see in the loom shot, there's a differential green coloration about the minute hand and the pearl. Everything else is blue loom. Nicely balanced with a date at six o'clock, and you can see these small white on blue printed segment style hashes for minutes and seconds outboard. Turn it all over. Caliber 8800. So what is it? Well, it's the end of the solid case backs on the Diver 300 meters, and it's the end of the vaunted Caliber 2500, the very first Omega coaxial. It served well in its D iteration from 2007 onward, but I have to say the 8800 is a tougher movement, a longer legged movement with its 55 hour power reserve, and a more precise movement as it is now a master chronometer. It has the COSC plus the METAS standard, meaning not only is the chronometer is a bare movement per the COSC, but it is then cased up, tested in six positions, not the chronometer five, and evaluated as a full watch for power reserve, winding efficiency, anti-magnetism, also chronometry and water resistance. Everything is tested in the METAS standard. It's a test dreamed up by Omega and the METAS, or the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. So holistically, far more challenging this than the COSC. You still get the full balance bridge and the free sprung index from the more deluxe caliber 8900. What you do lose is the time zone function. And instead of a 60 hour power reserve with the 8900, here you have a 55 hour reserve, you still have the 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate. The full balance bridge with the free sprung index gives you shock resistance. What you can't see is the silicon hairspring, which gives you anti-magnetism. Quick set date, hacking seconds, 300 meter water resistance, and the famed helium escape valve for those of you who are saturation divers or just want to lie about it. You can see this one and the entire Watchbox collection on our website, thewatchbox.com. And we're back with the Omega Seamaster Professional Diver 300 meter. Stainless steel and yellow gold by day. You can see this one is beautifully blue and green by night. Differential loom making it easier to line up the bezel pearl with the minute hand. See this one by the light of day on the watch box.